on your hot days here. She looks like an angel. You are such a tramp. But get wise, guys. It's been a long time since I've been out on the town, and I'm about ready to raise some hell. How about you? She's the devil in disguise. I'm Frida. And I'm Ted. And I'm Satan. She's the girlfriend from hell. Shouldn't we get to know one another first? To know. Isn't she a scream? Well, if you think that's a scream, you gotta see her drive. if you dare on a date you will never forget oh don't think this is a free ride i want something in return what you're so girlfriend from hell i'm really scared what should we do oh first off we don't invite maggie along with us anymore Girlfriend from Hell is a 1990 horror comedy movie directed by Daniel Peterson, starring Leanne Curtis and Dana Ashbrook. Leanne Curtis is probably best known for her role in Sixteen Candles as the best friend. The film is essentially about God's bounty hunter, who was also the inventor of the condom, tasked with tracking down and capturing the devil, possessing Leanne Curtis's naive, shy character Maggie into doing some things she never would find herself doing otherwise. The film was originally titled Babysitter from Hell and centered around a babysitter being possessed by Satan and terrorizing the children she's babysitting. The film was shot in 18 days in southern Los Angeles. It had its premiere at the Houston Film Festival on March 30, 1990 to a very lukewarm response. The film co-stars Dana Ashbrook as the devil hunter who hams it up the entire time. It's very good to see this guy do something like that. We've seen him in uh, Twin Peaks. And um, what movies like Wax Work, he popped up in the Willies. He's not necessarily a serious actor, but he never really hams it up like he does in this. And his, uh, his performance is just fun to watch. Obviously, this film had an extremely low budget, but that doesn't matter. What they do with the action scenes still looks good today, in my, in my opinion. There's people getting shrunk. There's satanic light orbs shooting through the house and smashing people in the chest. It is a great watch. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass, bitch! This movie has a lot of iconic scenes. Let me show you my favorite one. <laughs> Give them to me now! Oh, look! Time to go get some penguins. The role of Maggie, played perfectly by Leanne Curtis, was originally offered to other actresses, one of them being Tawny Katane, who I'm guessing wanted too much money or too much of something. Leanne Curtis brought to the role all of her charm that she brings to every role she's ever done, and she made this character her own. You can really tell this is something she very much wanted to do. It shines through her performance the entire time, and she really carries this entire film on her shoulders. Actress Leanne Curtis got into some hot water over this. She really wanted to do the film that her agents thought was just a little bit below her pay grade. You know, they wanted to make her a big star, and Leanne just wanted to make the movie she wanted to make. And she wound up getting let go by her agency. But Leanne Curtis had the last laugh, as in the credits of this film, there's a little jab. If you look closely, you will see the cast listing as Cast in Order of Agents Demands. Gotcha, Hollywood scum. John Waters' regular Ricky Lake stopped by the set to wish everyone luck, giving her B-movie blessing. The house featured in the film was the exact same house also featured in another favorite of mine, Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolorama.
Girlfriend from Hell consistently makes all of the top lists as far as bizarre films go, and it has midnight showings all across America till this day. A few years ago, it was turned into a successful stage play with an actually really good soundtrack. I had the opportunity to talk with the lovely Leanne Curtis about her time on this film. Let's take a look at that. So I noticed um, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. It never really clicked with me that Girlfriend from Hell was really your only starring role. Well, Critters 2 was like the other one, but it was more thought, like, you know, like I was the female lead, but I wasn't the lead. Girlfriend from Hell, I was definitely <laughs> the lead. Yeah, that was like the first and last time, and like I had really good agents at that time um and one agent at the place like my my particular agent wasn't there and i think he was on vacation or something and this other agent was sort of babysitting me and like i know the offer the phone call came in and then i got a call two days later like how come your agent isn't responding and i'm like i don't know so i called and i got all uppity with them and they got all uppity back at me like we don't handle actresses who get upset about films type girlfriend from hell i'm like you know i don't care if you're icm or if you're jack shit agent if i get a fucking offer you need to answer in the first fucking hour because that's just what's polite like it's not about the kind of movie the b-rated movie but like i don't care what if it's c rated fuck d fuck you answer them like you've got no manners and i'll tell you I'll out the person who did that. Her name is Carla Hackin. And last time I checked, she was working at Fox 2000 as some kind of like executive producer development. I don't know what the fuck she's doing, but she and her girlfriend have babies now. And like, you know, here, walk the line. Walk this line. How you doing? <laughs> nice. Walk my line. Fuck you. <laughs> um, well, I suppose I should go hunt them down one by one and kill them. What? So after all of the stuff with your agents and all the problems like that, when you were finally on set, um, did you ever think to yourself like, oh shit, what did I get myself into? Or was it an overall pleasant experience? No, I love Girlfriend from Hell. That was so much fun. I had so much fun. Yeah, well, it was definitely a fun movie. Yeah, it was. And Dan did a great job directing, man. Like, not that he's necessarily like an actor's director, he was technically sound, everything was fine, it's not that he was like a brilliant director, okay, I shouldn't say that, like, Dan is brilliant in his own way, um, he, he brought in the movie fast, like, he went, he got in early and under budget, like, that doesn't happen a lot, like, so he, you know, he was very efficient, I guess, he's a very efficient director, is what I was trying to say, badly. Yeah, I saw the shoot was like 18 days. 18 days, but he brought it in in 17. He brought it in in 17. And, um, how much under budget was he? I can't remember what the number was, but he was under budget and under prime. So that's, yeah. So I have an old VHS copy. Um, it never got put out on DVD. Do you know if there's any plans to do that? Me too. Lionsgate has it now. I actually called Lionsgate to ask them if they would let me either license it like get licensing rights so that i could maybe take it and do a screening and a q a someplace just to see what would happen and if I figure out how to get home videos made and distributed like my company and their company do like a joint venture get that going because so many people ask me about that and i know you know there are some kind of bad bootleg versions around well, no, but Lionsgate could make it better if they wanted to. Yeah, you got companies like uh, Blue Underground and even Lionsgate themselves. They put out these old movies and special editions. I don't right. know why they won't do it with this. I was trying to get Rainbow Media to play with me with The Flesh Eaters, man. That's like another one, my dad's movie. I would love like Arnold Drake, his partner, and his wife, Terry. And he, I think Arnold actually wrote the script. And I was sniffing around the copyright office to see exactly what's going on with it. Because I would love to do a remake at some point. 
and try try to redo that. You'll knock the devil out of her. Can you have imagine? you ever thought about maybe uploading a commentary for the movie for your fans who do have the VHS and who are willing to sync it up? Because I got to tell you, that'd be great. Are you serious? And so what? Like you would watch your shitty fucking VHS or whatever? And yeah, it's been done before. Play the YouTube thing alongside? But wait, you'd have to be like Kim Jong-il and have 15 televisions. <laughs> yes! So I thought it was interesting you and the director, Daniel Peterson, have a child together. Yep. Yep, and he's 28, 29. He just turned 29. He's in Brooklyn. He's married. He's, uh, yeah, he's going to start law school now. Um, it's really cool. A few years ago when they put out that musical based on the movie, what would you think of that? Did you see that coming? Yeah. Yep, a guy named Sean Matthew Whiteford uh, made a musical out of it. My mom and Dan went. I didn't go, but... Dan flew to New York and stayed with my mom, and the two of them went down to the dock. It wasn't bad. It was good, they said. I can't. It's so ugly. I know. I'm trying to find my lighter. Dude, like, this is really... Oh, wait. The one I'm sitting on? Okay. This isn't fair, and I'm sitting on it the whole time. Oh, yeah. I've been there before. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. Cheers, we all Leanne. have fears, right? Exactly. 2018 cocktail. Leanne is definitely one of the most interesting people I've ever met. She is a very kind soul, and I cannot thank her enough for doing this. And hopefully we get to do something else together in the future. This one goes out to you, Leanne. You're amazing. On the next episode of Staunch on Film, we delve deep into one of my favorite 90s forgotten classics, The Boys Club starring one of my favorite actors, Chris Penn, and we'll be talking to an actor from the film, Jared Blankert, about his time on the film, about his time with Chris Penn, and about some of his other movies. Until next time, this is Alex Staunch, and don't forget to rewind.